What's happening everyone and welcome back to Gringo Burritos. Breakfast burritos are one of my favorite things to eat and they trigger fond food memories from when I was a kid. I spent a lot of time experimenting with different ingredients, improving my techniques, and avoiding the soggy sadness that breakfast burritos can become. Today I'm excited to share with you my favorite breakfast burrito packed with all sorts of good ingredients that are near and dear to me and some tips to help it from becoming a soggy mess. Let's start by gathering the ingredients. Today we're going to use some chorizo, linguiça, potatoes, Mexican rice, eggs, cheese, tortillas of course, and whatever hot sauce floats your boat. Both chorizo and linguiça are my all-time favorite sausages, particularly for breakfast burritos. Chorizo is fairly common, but I think linguiça is a bit less well-known. But only slightly less well-known is this! While chorizo's roots are in Spain, the Mexican version is a bit different, most commonly found in an inedible casing that is removed, allowing the sausage to crumble. This makes it ideal for combining with other ingredients, like eggs. Linguiça is Portuguese in origin, and is similar to the Spanish version of chorizo, either smoked or cured in a natural edible casing, and typically does not require additional cooking. There are many uses for linguiça in this form, but for today's application, we're going to remove the casing and dice it into smaller pieces. All right, we're gonna start with the chorizo and the potatoes since those take the longest. Potatoes are fairly straightforward, but a couple tips, if I may. Use a waxy potato. Starchy potatoes, like russet, don't keep their form and will just result in an overcooked, mushy grossness. Dice your potatoes into small and uniform pieces so they will cook evenly and quickly. And you want to use enough oil to coat all the potatoes. Use a medium-high heat to aid the cooking time. Next, we'll start with the tree soap. Some people might be turned off by the next scene, so feel free to look away. The most efficient way to remove chorizo from its packaging is also, unfortunately, the most disgusting way. But I think chorizo is a bit misunderstood. I have friends and family that find chorizo too greasy, but it doesn't have to be. If you cook it slow in the beginning and allow the fat to render, it fries the chorizo in the rendered fat, allowing for more thorough cook time, but also gets cooked off and reabsorbed to some degree. So it's not too greasy but there will be some grease that's left behind. And that's a good thing, because that will be absorbed by the eggs while also serving as a lubricant. All right, I made this rice ahead of time for a different meal, but you can find the recipe in another video I did for traditional gringo burritos. When the potatoes are about halfway done, about 10 or 15 minutes or so, I add the salt, pepper, and onions. My thought on this is twofold. If you add the onions too soon, then they can burn, and that's just no bueno. Also, I want to cook the potatoes a bit before I add the salt, so the salt doesn't draw out all the moisture too soon in the cooking process. That, and if you add the salt and the onions at the same time, then you can season both simultaneously. When the chorizo begins to darken and starts to resemble what a crumbled sausage should look like, you know it's close to done. If you don't like chorizo, you can use linguiça instead, or maybe both. As I mentioned, for today's application, we're going to remove the casing and dice it into some bite-sized pieces which is very easy to do. Just cut down the middle and then peel off the casing. These don't need to cook long as the sausage is already fully cooked. You just want to apply some heat and get a nice browning on them. Also, these don't contain as much fat or grease as tree soap, so I typically add just a bit of oil to cook the sausage, which will also serve as a lubricant for the eggs. Okay, so now we'll whisk some eggs to add to the tree soap or linguiça if you've watched some of my other videos, like scrambled eggs, then you know I would ordinarily add seasoning to the eggs. But there's already a ton of flavor in chorizo, so additional seasoning isn't necessary. Also, I would add some water and milk, but I find that can lead to eggs with too much moisture, which ultimately leaks out of the burrito, and that's absolutely no bueno. And this is just one of the techniques to keep your burrito from becoming too soggy. I'm a bit of a burrito snob, so I just can't stand to have leaky, soggy burritos. But the cooking methodology is the same. You want to stir to combine, and just when the eggs begin to lose their shine, turn off the heat and let them coast. Meanwhile, we can begin preparing to build our burrito. I like to add cheese in between some of the ingredients to aid the melting factor, but when it comes to breakfast burritos, I'm not nearly as particular about the layering, mostly because they don't contain vegetables. What? I never said these were healthy breakfast burritos. Also, Vegetables tend to add moisture, thus making for a soggy burrito. Which is unfortunate, because I really enjoy salsa on my burritos, but salsa inherently contains liquid, and I've made countless attempts at making a burrito that contains salsa with limited success. 
That said, two methods to keeping the salsa juice at bay are as follows. Pair the salsa next to the rice so that the rice will absorb some of the extra liquid. It's not a perfect solution, but it does help. I recently tried to drain the liquid from the salsa, and that was fairly successful. Also, waiting for the ingredients to cool off a bit and not adding them to the burrito while piping hot can help as well. This is the same concept as letting meat rest. I mean, eggs are technically meat, right? Just like a steak, moisture within the eggs will slowly redistribute as they cool or rest. And if you add them to the burrito while still very hot, the liquid can exit when compressed, just like cutting into a steak too early and having all that infamous red juice run all over. In any case, lay the ingredients to your own liking, but make sure to heat your tortilla before rolling it and don't neglect a proper rolling technique. If you don't have a gas range, you can use the microwave. Or, better yet, just heat it in a clean, non-stick skillet. Like you would a quesadilla, because you would never make a quesadilla in the microwave. Would you? Despite your attempts to mitigate any excess liquid in the egg mixture, or any other ingredient, liquid may persist. And so it's imperative you do your best to contain all the deliciousness inside your burrito. I typically just eat them as is, but you can take an extra step to add some more flavor and texture by giving it a quick spin in the frying pan. Kinda like the love child of a chimichanga and a quesadilla. You're welcome for that mental imagery. As you may have noticed, I did use some salsa, which is homemade, and I included a link here if you want to try it for yourself. It has a lot of flavor, and you can easily adjust the heat level to your liking. I like it spicy! And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more delicious recipes and fun cooking tips. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Ah, oh, crap. Contain all the deliciousness. All the... Contain <laughs> all the delicious... Is deliciousness even a word? I... <laughs> contain all the deliciousness inside your burrito. There, I said it. Flavor and texture by giving it a, by, 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 by giving it, giving it a, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> by giving it a quick spin in the frying pan. Kinda like the love child of a chimichanga and a quesadilla.